In this video, we're going to eliminate the power brake booster on my first gen RX-7 and convert to manual brakes. I decided to eliminate the power brake booster on my first gen RX-7 race car. There were a couple of reasons for this. First one was that it was creating a vacuum leak that was causing some running issues, so it was obviously bad. Second reason was that on these first gen RX-7s, it's getting very hard to find certain parts for them, and the power brake booster is one of those. But being a 2,000 pound car, it really doesn't need power brakes anyway, and being a race car, saving weight wherever I can is a good thing. So I decided to go with this uh, power brake booster eliminator kit from Techno Toy Tuning. Essentially what you get is hardware and then this fabricated uh, plate that goes against the firewall and is pre-drilled for a number of different master cylinder types. It's a very simple kit and inexpensive as well, so to me this made sense. Whenever you're converting from power brakes to manual brakes, you need to give yourself some extra mechanical advantage. And so you're, so I'm going to need to remove the pedal box, essentially lower the pivot point of the brake pedal, and then put it back in. Uh, the numbers that you see range from about 6 to 7 to 1 that you're looking for in terms of uh, ratio of the brake pedal to the pivot point, compared with about 4.5 to 1 of the power brake setup. So this is not too bad of a job to do once you get the pedal box out, but getting a pedal box out is usually going to be a pain. So let's go ahead and get this thing out the rest of the way. Well, I got into this and like with a lot of things, once you get into it, what it looks, what you think you're going to have to do at first changes a little bit. This is a really awkward angle. So let me try to orient you. Uh, I'm on my back. I've removed the front seat. And so I'm, I'm lying down on the floorboards with my head kind of where the pedals are looking up. And so this here is the brake pedal. This is the clutch pedal. You can see that the push rod's not aligned. We'll deal with that later. Um, and so what I've done is I've not removed the pedal box because I'm realizing that that's essentially gonna be impossible. And so I've taken on another task that may also prove to be impossible. We'll find out, which is removing just the brake pedal, and then I'm gonna be trying to install all of that back in. So there's this big long bolt that goes through the pedal box, and um, Mazda must have intended for you to be able to remove it, because it, it does have enough space to be removed. Goes the whole way through, there's a nut on the other side of the clutch pedal on the pedal box. Um, once you do that, one of, the, one of the other things is that there are these return springs both for the brake pedal and the clutch pedal. The one for the clutch pedal isn't an issue at this point, although we'll see if it's an issue when I'm putting everything back together. Um, so now I have to undo that spring, and then I can pull the brake pedal out and measure and drill a new hole. And uh, then we'll start trying to put everything back together. All right, I got the brake pedal arm out. And so if you measure the distance between the pivot up here and the initial, the normal hole down here is three inches, and it's about 13 inches if you go from the pivot down to the brake pad where you push with your foot. So that comes out to right around that four and a half to one multiplication ratio. So I need to drill a hole about an inch up here to get to that um, six to seven to one ratio. I'm going to do it probably about three quarters of an inch or so. Um, because I don't want to get it too close up, and I think that that ought to still be sufficient. So I'm going to drill the hole and then put this back in. Okay, hole drilled, and then I've got the push rod on just to make sure that everything fits and moves freely. So uh, this is looking good. I'll take this push rod back off, and let's see if we can get this pedal installed. Uh, one thing that I'll note before I put it back in, um, that you do have this bushing, so this is a good opportunity to just put a little bit of grease on it before you put it back to make sure it continues to move freely. So I'm gonna do that as well. Well, I'm upside down again, but if you see everything is back together, uh, there really wasn't a good way to record this, but I'll kind of talk you through it. After drilling the, the new hole in the brake pedal, um, I decided to put the, try to get the bolt through before uh, putting the spring on. I don't think that it was appreciably easier or harder one way or the other, but um, I ended up using two screwdrivers 
to basically try to pry that spring back into the hole for the brake pedal. Um, the clutch pedal, something to note is that it is it, it pivots on the one side that's closer to the brake pedal. So you can't really see from here, but essentially uh, the bolt goes through the bushing that's on the inside of the clutch pedal arm and then you've got the uh, washers and the nut on the inside that you certainly, almost certainly cannot see there. So all of this is really tight. Having a roll cage in here doesn't make any of it easier, but I was able to get it all in. Uh, one thing to note, I did not take the spring, the return spring off of the clutch pedal. That I think would have been a lot harder to try to get back on. And I was able to pivot the clutch pedal in such a way that it really actually wasn't all that bad to make that work. Now that all of this is in, uh, now it's going to come down to getting the master cylinder attached and then the brake lines bent a little bit for the new position of it. Uh, I can tell already I'm going to have to shorten that uh, push rod coming off of the brake pedal arm, so I'll time to take some measurements and start working on that. And with that it's installed, so let me go through the order of operations for how this made sense to go in a few notes. So First thing is, after I got the brake pedal back in, um, I put the push rod on. That turned out to be the wrong order, so I had to take it back off. Um, you have to put the plate in and tighten it down. And then after that, you need to get the master cylinder on. Um, the way that this push rod works, at least the way that I had it, um, it wasn't long enough to be able to fit in through the middle of the master cylinder. Uh, <clears throat> So one, that's that's a note here. So Techno Toy Tuning sends a push rod that is a larger diameter, uh, so it doesn't fit into the hole in the middle of the master cylinder and go up a ways like the stock one does. By itself, this is okay so long as you have it adjusted right, but you also need to make sure that you have a good chamfer around the edges so that it's not likely to just fall right out. So what I did was I bolted the master cylinder up, um, and then another note there, they include a couple of bolts, and for this top one here, at least on this setup, there is really no way to get that bolt through this hole. You do need a stud. The bottom one, you can use one of those bolts, uh, which I did. But for the top one, I had to put a stud in. So then, once that was done on the inside, uh, I had to cut down that push rod. took a couple of times to get it the exact length that I wanted get the uh, chamfer around the outside and then get it adjusted and tightened down. So next thing is um, I have to bleed the brake system because in the process of putting the master cylinder on, I did have to take off the hard lines, one that goes to the back, the one that goes to the front right, and then underneath here is the one that goes to the front left. And there was enough room to be able to bend them some without kinking anything, so I'm not worried about any problems there, but you kind of need to do that after the master cylinder has been bolted into place. So we're going to bleed the brakes and then we'll go for a drive, see what we think. I've completed the manual brake conversion on my RX-7 and I've done a couple of test drives with it. The braking on this car is still just fine. This really does not need power brakes. The installation was overall pretty simple and straightforward. The hardest part was removing the brake pedal so that I could re-drill the hole that the push rod went into, but otherwise the installation really wasn't bad at all. Having to shorten the push rod a little bit is to be expected. This kit is use, used on multiple cars, and so when you're doing something like this, you're probably going to have to trim and adjust it. However, the braking on this is just fine. I had Hawk blue pads on this. If you had different brake pads on it, you might want to change them in order to get something that gets a greater initial bite. That's a common thing that has to happen when you ch remove power brakes on a car. But the overall conversion has saved somewhere in the range of 5 to 10 pounds and overall seems to be worthwhile. With the lack of power boosters available, this is a good option to go to on this car, for, even if you're not trying to save weight. Uh, I'm still very happy with the braking. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful. Leave any questions down below.